Lesson 3.10, Patterns with Decimals, Sequence and Terms of a Pattern. A sequence is an ordered list of numbers. Each number in a sequence is called a term. In this sequence, each term is an even number. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. They're all even numbers. We can use addition or subtraction to describe a pattern or create a sequence with decimals by finding what changed from one term to the next term. Was there an increase? How much was added? Was there a decrease? How much was subtracted? Each sequence can have a pattern rule. By comparing the terms and finding the pattern rule, we can extend the sequence or fill in missing terms. In this sequence, we see the terms are 5, 10, 15, 20, then we have two missing ones. We can see the rule is add 5. We add 5, we get 10, we add 5, we get 15, we add 5, we get 20, and we can fill these in. If we add 5 to 20, we get 25. And if we add 5 more, we get 30. You might see three little dots after a comma, after the last term. The three dots are called an ellipsis and it tells us to continue the pattern. We can find the pattern rule for decimals in a sequence by using addition or subtraction to determine is there an increase or decrease of the terms. We have 1 and 5 tenths, then we have a 3, that's 3 whole, then we have 4 and 5 tenths, then we have a 6, that's a 6 whole, and the ellipsis tells us that the pattern continues on. We can see that the terms are increasing. Each term is a little more than the one before it. We can add trailing zeros so each decimal has the same amount of digits. We learned about trailing zeros in video 3.4. So if we have 3 and we want to find the difference between 3 and 1 and 5 tenths, we're going to subtract to find the difference. And we can add a trailing zero and a decimal point to the right of the 3 so we can subtract. And we see it's 1 and 5 tenths. Now we find the difference between 4 and 5 tenths and 3, and we find it's 1 and 5 tenths again. Now we find the difference between 6 and 4 and 5 fifths, we see it's 1 and 5 tenths again. We compare every term to be sure we have found the correct rule, and the rule is to add 1 and 5 tenths. Now that we've determined the rule is add 1 and 5 tenths, we can extend the sequence. We have 6, we're going to add 1 and 5 tenths, that's 7 and 5 tenths. Now we need to add another 1 and 5 tenths. We add 1 and 5 tenths to the previous term to its left. A rule must describe the change from one term to the next term for every pair of consecutive terms in a sequence. Comparing only one or two pairs of terms may not be enough to find the rule. We have 1 and 2 tenths, then it goes to 1 and 8 tenths. We added 6 tenths. For the next term, it's 2 and 4 tenths, we added another 6 tenths. Now if we had just stopped here, we would think that the rule is to add 6 tenths. But if we continue on, we see that it goes down. We subtracted 3 tenths. Then we find the difference between these two terms and find that we add 6 tenths again. Then we add 6 tenths again. Then we subtract 3 tenths. So the rule is to add 6 tenths, then add 6 tenths, then subtract 3 tenths. We can have a rule that's got addition and subtraction in it. We can even have a rule that's got division and multiplication in it. And consecutive means they follow one right after another. So consecutive terms are the terms in order one after another. When we find the rule for a pattern, we can find missing or unknown terms in the sequence. So here we've got missing terms in the middle. We see it goes from 17 to 15 and 3 tenths, down to 13 and 6 tenths, down to 11 and 9 tenths, so they're decreasing. So we know we need to subtract. 
We start with 17, we can put a trailing zero here so we could subtract 15 and 3 tenths, and we get 1 and 7 tenths. 1 and 7 tenths was subtracted to get to 15 and 3 tenths. And to get to 13 and 6 tenths, another 1 and 7 tenths was subtracted. To get to 11 and 9 tenths, another 1 and 7 tenths was subtracted. And we check between here and see the difference is 1 and 7 tenths. That means we need to subtract 1 and 7 tenths to find each of those terms. We subtract 1 and 7 tenths from 11 and 9 tenths, and we get 10 and 2 tenths. We subtract another 1 and 7 tenths and get 8 and 5 tenths. We subtract another 1 and 7 tenths and get 6 and 8 tenths. We can write the terms of a sequence if we're given the rule and a start term. It says the rule, we start at 4 and 25 hundredths and add 1 and 25 hundredths. So we know the first term to begin with is 4 and 25 hundredths. It told us start at 4 and 25 hundredths. Then we add 1 and 25 hundredths to get the next term. It's 5 and 50 hundredths. Now we can add 5 and 50 hundredths to 1 and 25 hundredths to get the next term. We get 6 and 75 hundredths. Now we can add 1 and 25 hundredths to this term to get the last one. And we can remove the trailing zeros. We had eight ones. That's just eight whole with no tenths and no hundredths. So we can just write an eight. We can even write this as five and five tenths if we wanted to. We can remove that trailing zero. A sequence has a starting value for the first term, and it might not be zero. It depends on the rule. If we're given that the rule says start at 3 and 2 tenths and add 2 and 4 tenths, then our first term will be 3 and 2 tenths. That's where we'll start. Then we'll add 2 and 4 tenths to it to get the next term, add another 2 and 4 tenths. And if we're given the rule start at 12 and 68 hundredths, and subtract 1 and 16 hundredths, then we're going to start at 12 and 68 hundredths. That will be our first term. Then we'll subtract 1 and 16 hundredths from it to get our second term. Su Jin has $18.45. If she spends $2.25 each day for bus fare, how much money will she have after five days? describe the pattern we used to solve. So we think we start with $18.45 and subtract $2.25 five times for the five days. We start with $18.45 and after subtracting her bus fare we get $16.20. That's how much she has left on the first day. That's our first term. We subtract $2.25 from this amount to get our second term. And we subtract $2.25 from this amount to get our third term. We subtract $2.25 from this amount to get our next term. And for the fifth one, the fifth day, we subtract it again and we see $7.20. So Su Jin will have $7.20 left. We subtracted $2.25 five times, starting at $18.45. It's telling us to decide if the sequence shows a pattern. Then we need to circle no pattern or pattern. And if it does show a pattern, we need to write the rule. We look at the digits, and we see it's going from 3 and 9 tenths to 5 to 6 and 1 tenth to 7 and 2 tenths, to 8 and 3 tenths, to 9 and 4 tenths. So it is increasing, so it's addition. So let's try subtraction to find the difference between 5 and 3 and 9 tenths, and then 6 and 1 tenth, and 5, and so on. We subtract each digit and find that they all have a difference of 1 and 1 tenth. So we know the rule is add one and one tenth, and there is a pattern. 
because all of these have the same difference. The difference between each number is the same. So there's a pattern and the rule is to add one and one tenth. Now we need to compare the differences for these. We see it goes from 12 and 6 tenths down to 9 and 2 tenths down to 4 and 7 tenths but then it goes back up again and back up again. So let's find the difference between these terms. We use subtraction to find the difference between each term and we see that in between 12 and 6 tenths and 9 and 2 tenths we have a difference of 3 and 4 tenths. But the difference between these two terms is 4 and 5 tenths. And the difference between these two terms is 5 and 1 tenth. And the difference between these two terms is 6. They're all different from each other, so there's no pattern. For this one, we saw they all had 1 and 1 tenth difference between them, so there was a pattern, and we knew the rule. Because each of these have difference that's different from the next set of terms, there's no pattern. Let's try it with this one. We can see it's going from 1 and 20 hundredths to 1 and 40 hundredths, then it's going to 1 and 43 hundredths, then it's going to 1 and 47 hundredths, then 1 and 58 hundredths. Do you think there's a pattern? The difference between these two terms is 20 hundredths. The difference between these two terms is three hundredths. The difference between these two terms is four hundredths. And the difference between these two terms is eleven hundredths. All the differences are different, so there's no pattern. If there's no pattern, there's no rule. The only sequence here was this one because the differences were all the same. They had the same pattern when we compared one term to the next term. Our next lesson is 3.11 and we're going to be doing word problem solving with addition and subtraction for money. We're going to learn to make a table to help us. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.